Welcome, welcome to the Pew. Welcome to the Pew. The Pew. Pew. We're in Madison Square Park in New York City. It's a beautiful Sunday afternoon. Quintessential beautiful Sunday afternoon. Yeah, it's, we could be having a picnic out here. It's so picture perfect. In fact, maybe we will have a picnic later. I mean, Shake Shack is just across the park, and I'm in the mood for a Shack Burger. Shack Burger. Shack Burger. Yeah, the Shake Shack Burger. It's delicious. It's 900 calories of really? fatty goodness. And you need to eat two then. Yeah, well, you know, I, I am on a 3,000 calorie a day diet because I'm trying to gain weight. And uh, and even at 3,000 calories a day, I can't gain weight. I didn't gain weight until I was 42 and joined uh, cruise ships, Princess Cruises as a photographer. And then, oh, I, then, gained, oh, then I gained 20 pounds. <laughs> I grew into my body at that 42. I was always like this bony so, maroney. How many years? So for. John was telling us earlier that he worked for cruise ships for several years. How many years was that? Five years on Princess Cruises. So what Cruises. was that like? Well, it's a lifestyle. Uh, it might be easier if you're straight because there's lots of, lots of action and people hook up. Um, but it, I really became a photographer then, actually, because I ended up uh, really reading hundreds of books on, on photography and teaching photography to the passengers. Uh, a little self-promotion, but on my website I've got a photo course that I share, uh, 95 Easy Tips, and it's all my world travel photography that I use to illustrate it. So, I mean, you make you can work with great people on the ships and real jerks, and the passengers can be like, oh my god, fabulous people, but, you know, it's like cruise, cruise ships, but more higher end on the Princess Cruises. But I saw the world. I went around Africa twice and Asia for five or six months. And Do you stop there? Do you stop? Do you stop and get off? Of course. For how long? Usually from like six in the morning to sometimes six at night. Oh, okay. Like I've done 12 hour tours from Casablanca all the way up to Rabat and then back to Casablanca and you're, you know, seeing all sorts of, you know, sites and museums and mosques and. It sounds uh, fabulous. Oh yeah, in Beijing. And uh, you're getting paid for it. Yeah, time, yeah. Right? Eat all, you know, eat up what you want. I mean, you're in a, you're in a little cabin with another person, um, but a great experience. And I share all sorts of photo essays on my sites too. You know who used to work on cruise ships also? Uh, Mavis and uh, too. And Mavis and, and her and her boyfriend. Yeah, hmm? and, and Christopher Robin too. I think he used, oh, yeah? he used to do. What do you do? do? Like a, he would do like Broadway, sh off Broadway oh, he was, shows. Oh, he like, was a performer. He was a performer. Oh, yeah. Like Mavis That's was Luke. a waitress, That's I think. And, and Darvis or whatever her boyfriend's name was, um, right after she was out of cruise I mean, they, they went on a cruise ship in order to stop using drugs because they figured they couldn't get drugs out there. And, and then they, and, and of course, they, they got little little did they realize. Yeah, <laughs> I, I probably you could get it from the crew, but um, oh, if you're in the in the dance shows or the singer dancers, I mean, you've got the that's the life of Riley. Although they do have to have extra duties, like in the cruise department, uh, the entertainment department, where they're you know, the crew go hosting cruising every night. bingo and karaoke. So they're all it was all part of the fun. Um, it was, I really enjoyed it. I mean, I, I also it was very different. I, I worked on the small ships with only one other photographer. Okay. So it's basically, you might work two or four hours a day and it's fabulous. But on the big ships, it's exponentially more work. There's 12 photographers, assistant managers breathing down your neck. But again, it's, it, it's you know, you make it what you make. You make it what, what breathing you make down it. your neck about? They're assistant managers. And yeah, but what are they, what, what, what are they, being, what's so Being anal to? and giving you a hard time just for the sake of it. But because right, they have to justify their, their yeah, position. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. By making you do busy yeah. work or whatever. But, you know, I I went on hundreds of tours. I've got a, an archive of 130,000, you know, port and, and tour photos. Um, but the Forbidden City in Beijing, around Vietnam, I mean, just name it. But uh, awesome. so that's, that's an exciting, that was the opportunity. And when, after I got hired, and I had to wait about three or four months before my co contract started. I had this, oh my God, this flashback. I said, John, this is your dream job when you were a kid, because I used to watch The Love Boat. The and Love this, Boat. And, and, and Ted McGinley, a hot young Ted McGinley, when he joined his second or third year, he was Ace the Photographer. And I said, I could do that when I grew up. Remember when Andy Warhol was on The Love Boat? And he did The Love Boat, yes. And, and they had a... Uh, the mother from the happy days as a former superstar for like ultraviolet yeah imagine the, whatever but um and it was the love boat because that was princess the, the, the love boat was princess it was the original uh, love right. boat was the pacific princess so um, awesome like, you know, like great people and whatnot but well, it was the world travel i mean all the museums and all the sites and whatnot 
So John has big news. Uh, he's told us that the Fales Library at NYU has, which has a downtown collection, which is the same collection that Nelson Sullivan's All of his, video, uh, archives video archives in, has, have asked him to make a donation of his to donate archive. my archive. So are you donating all of it? Well, I'm not not the raw stuff. As I said, I've, I, I've, I I have last year I scanned 4,000 pictures and da 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 da. So I've got like 2,200 pictures that have been restored, large format, and so they can go in. They can maybe send me a hard drive or whatnot. And that motivates me to go back to my archive and go through all the photos again and to just do more. I should take and my photos, my, my invite staff, and offer them. See, the, the, what they have is the Fails Library is the research library at NYU, and it's, uh, down, it's special collections. And the downtown collection is part of that. Right. Uh, Dean Johnson's memorabilia, John Sex's memorabilia, the girl I'm staying with right, and visiting in Brooklyn, uh, April Palmieri, she donated all of John Was Sex's stuff. Was she Miss April? Hmm? Was she Miss April? No, not Miss April. Um, She's one of the bodacious tatas. Yeah, this was April. Oh, okay. Oh, Miss. Oh, yeah. Oh, sorry, I didn't realize that. Yeah, Miss. Yeah. She's in a lot of the Tom Rubnitz videos, and oh, yeah. So, um, so that so motivates me when I go back to Toronto. I, I, you know, focus and do more of that. No, I mean it's a great place for your work. Totally. I mean, you know, because it's you'll be researchable, you'll searchable. Yeah, <laughs> for researchers, publishers, filmmakers. Well, you have already been institutionalized. <laughs> well, that's what I say. Priesthood will all be. Uh, don't put us all in your category. We will all be institutionalized. <laughs> yeah. We're going to take a break right now. <laughs> Before we get institutionalized. We can remind people that in the first 45 minutes of Glory Days, there's 95 of my photographs. I know it's all self-promotional, Michael. Promo whore from hell here. And now a word from our sponsor. Hard to believe. It's a bit of a breeze. It's supposed to be 89 degrees, but it's not. It's humid it's today. Dry. Not humid. It's dry. It's dry. And John was just telling Michael what a hot daddy he's become. Wow, silver daddy. Do you, do you feel like a hot daddy? No. At never? I feel like a hot toddy. Hot toddy. <laughs> no, I don't feel like a hot toddy daddy. Well, one day when I grow up, I'll be a hot daddy. I'm only 56. I feel like a cold mommy. Chill, chill. Last well, you're very low energy today. What happened? Come on, here, here. Oh, I'm intimidating, but intimidated. Ouch! Intimidated by having a big celebrity on the show. All right. <laughs> oh, nothing I'm an anti-celebrity. <laughs> See, uh, I always talk about my work in New York is, I didn't do studio work, like uh, Michael Fezzerka Lee, but I, every, the whole world was my muse. I didn't need to, you know, invite them to a studio. I went and found them. Well, I mean, it's like, just two totally different styles of photography, and, oh, both, totally, of the, totally. and both of them are complimentary. equally valid. They're, and, yes, and oh, they're, totally. They're completely complimentary, and uh, you know, it's a good thing that Michael Zachary did do studios because really, very few nobody, photographers almost did nobody did those club kids. What he did, you know, so yeah. like, I mean, when his ex when I saw his exhibition in Florida at the Stonewall Museum, I, I, it was breathtaking. The to yeah. see it all on the walls because yeah. no other photographer can really show something like Definitely that. You know? well, so it was, it's, it was it's also monumental. very convenient that his office was right next to library. I actually so that read that. You could it send people there before they. You came ordered to them to go there first. Yeah, That's and good. you don't really, you don't really think of monument, the word monumentality when you look at these photographs individually, but when you see them all mounted Definitely. in an exhibition or museum, yeah. it just takes your breath away. So kudos to Michael Pizzacchi. And kudos to John who for being present and taking all of these photographs. I mean, it's, you know, how does it feel to have bit, have all these memories? Well, it wasn't wasted time, I don't think. <laughs> it certainly wasn't. I mean, you've uh, uh, certainly capitalized no, on it. And he's also, like, I he's felt... like the go-to person for this kind of thing. Um, well, when I, 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 can't, I, don't, I can't think of any other. Well, for that time period. Yeah, yeah, that yeah time and period. I did it. It was concentrated. Three years, uh, in and out. Right? And, and I was serious. That was and my it was, job. It's an, it was an important time See, period. You, I'm seeing a lot in the, um, on the Facebook group page, Celebrity Clubs of New York, that um, Bradley O'Brien does. 
And so, you know, Larry T. And we're also, everyone's sharing photos. But, you know, a lot of these, the people who just brought cameras, and they're not really good photos, but they're a document with stuff. But somebody needed to really shoot That's the scene. Of, what makes, what's the difference and, between a snapshot and a, and a, well, and a, we might, and a these were proxy shot? Well, they're composed and I'm, I'm, they're focused. A lot of these, not, almost all the photos that people are sharing aren't focused. So they're not real photos. They're not like... Yeah, it's very uh, Neither far. are the people taking them. But then them. again, <laughs> the, all of the uh, Andy Warhol contact sheets that they've started sharing, not one photo is in focus. He would just he would do this and that. It's, it's of its moment. It's, uh, it says something, but it's frustrating when... Because he wasn't really doing it. He wasn't really taking a photograph. He was just doing you know what he would do. But uh, I, I mean, say, Tina Paul was a real photographer, yeah. and that's a fine thing. Well, she had a professional she camera was a, too. She a, a professional camera. So like uh, Wolfgang Wiesner, who sort of I, he sort of eased out of the scene as I was coming in. He's also known as Wowie, W O W E, Wolfgang Wiesner. He was a real photographer. His work is beautiful in, in the early Details magazine. Ben Buchanan, also very good. But there was Miss you know, Chicky. Miss Chicky was a real photographer too at the Limelight. But uh, you know, I'm just saying that the, the photos that are coming out now aren't photographers' photographs. There's just people that were, my nose is really itchy. My hair, my nose hair grows and it gets <laughs> Anyway. But, I can't see any But that was it. my job. I didn't drink until the last few months when I what was- What did you do? Uh, don't, don't, we're not gonna go there, Michael. Everybody has drug problems and emotional problems. We've all been abused and degraded and bullied. Were you a great a bully when you were a child? Abused, degraded, and bullied? Well, most people. Yes. Um, well, especially most gay men. Especially certainly. when you're a sensitive, you know, certainly. little boy. Yeah. I mean, know. Especially if you grew up in the 70s or 80s. You know, you know I was a, uh, my Catholic high school gave me Crohn's disease. I used yeah, to, my so, Catholic this, college I'd walk down the hallway, Simone, you punk faggot. I wear little leather, skinny leather ties. I was the punk faggot. Yeah, they looked for the tail. If anything, side. I was new wave, but. <laughs> But no, I, I mean, I'm a critic of photography, duh. And I'm, I know what a good photographer photograph is. But, you know, but also at the same time, I thought after three years, what am I doing here? There was nobody, very few places to publish this work. I was a social, in retrospect, I was a social documentarian. And I'm very glad I did it. And, it's, you know. You captured a very yeah. uh, entertaining time in New York City nightlife. Yeah. The only thing regrets is I wish I did went more, oh, twice as much as I did. You can't go out every night because then I, you know, you think every night you, well, you don't go out. Every night, yeah, every night you don't go out, you're missing uh, unique outfits that you'll you'll never you'll get another chance to see. It's true. Did you ever wear the same outfit more than once? Yes. Oh. Oh, really? <laughs> different variation. Yeah, okay, yeah but we would wear the but same outfits, line, but with like not the same makeup, maybe. Yeah. Or like a different uh, way. Uh, we went, and we went and ripped the sleeves but off. Certain right? looks, yes. Certain Alter looks that Musta would show up in, let's say, or Sister Dementia would never repla repeat a No, a she repeated. Yeah. Yeah, she repeated. No, she did. No, she repeated. She, oh, maybe that does different characters. I get you. The Goldilocks, and Goldilocks had certain Goldilocks looks. Was he had that, gold, that, 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 that uh, sequin. But see, what I liked about, cover, you know, I, I call these people all my muses, right? As I said that. But um, back then, there was only, there wasn't everybody dressed up and, and over the top. I, you I, won't get the same combination of everybody twice. No, like, for example, <laughs> the photos I have of you, of your outlaw party at Nathan's Coney Island in Times Square, is you're wearing, your, got your ass out, and everybody else, it's winter, and everybody's just in overcoats. Like, there's no outfits, and there's almost no club kids. Like, what, what, like a lot of Because that didn't really come, like, the explosion of the club kids didn't really happen. You're right. It wasn't until I left. You're right. right. And in certain ways, I'm sort of glad I wasn't there, because I, not that I didn't like a lot of the club kids. Well, we but, were obnoxious. And you were obnoxious. On and um, well, we were, I, we finally, were offensive. I finally saw the documentary. What network was it? The Independent. Um, the other documentary they did on you, just well, last did. fall. And it was all Tina Paul's photographs and Tina Paul's videos. And it was the later club kids. And I, I, don't, don't, I didn't know them. I don't know them. Of course I didn't know, know them. But they don't look like I wanted them. <laughs> well, all the later. Did, why did you leave New York? I was worn out. Yeah, you know, I thought, what am I doing here? Details was ending. And I wasn't really publishing much in details at that point. Because I was trying to do as many parties as I could. I realized to have one party a week, you need three in the pipeline. Yeah. You know, and I was a one-man show. You know, the last thing I did for Steve Lou was at La Palace de Bote was a uh, splash, a Rizzoli book splash, a history of swimwear. And I did, you know, 15 models and 30 suits from 15 designers, blah, blah, blah. And Andy Anderson gave me uh, a mix, like a bubble gum music. 
and and then what does Stephen Lewis say? It sucked. And <laughs> <laughs> well, as he was paying you, did and he I say was, that? <laughs> and I, was, I said, I don't know if I said, fuck you, Stephen Lewis. But it's like, I, and I, it's, I sort of broke me, not broke me, broke me. But it's like, what am I doing this for? What am I doing this for, you assholes? Money. You know, yeah, that wasn't enough money, honey, you know, for like four weeks of work. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Like the amount of yeah. work that went and into party And I was the most elaborate. The most, never got Yeah, the most enough. elaborate party. I had all these models fresh off the plane from Sweden. It was, it was what it was. All right. Well, thank you for joining us for another episode, John. Uh, we'll, we'll have him again for another episode. Can't get rid of me. <laughs> See you next time. Bye.